You guys ready to move on? Yep. Now you're a man, a man, man, man. <laughs> Are you introducing yourself? Well, I, let me just do it again. That's not. I'm not introducing myself with that. I'm not All a man. Right. Andy. Uh, I'm not Debo that kind Samuel. of a man. Debo Samuel had a, an incredible rookie year. Had a moment, uh, you know, a, a stretch of games where he really appeared to break out. We have that drop for a reason. It looked like a man out there as a rookie, just absolutely dominating, <laughs> uh, throwing fools off, getting you know, getting those screens and uh, breaking tackles. Now this is a low passing offense. With Jimmy Garoppolo not wanting to throw the ball downfield, they bring in uh, Brandon Ayuk and uh, Ayuk. Ayuk and I, it basically just saying that sounds, you know, that I, I was right there with get you. It, get in on it, man. It's I'm, fun. I'm in now. I was um, a little startled. I'll be honest. <laughs> Excellent. So the question is whether or not Debo is going to take that second year leap into being a really dominant fantasy asset. I think he's good. I have a hard time trusting the offense. I've got him at 29. Mike, you've got him up in the wide receiver two clear territory mm -hmm. at 22. And like he's him. got the full breakout coming. He's saying wide receiver 14 is where he's landing in his rankings right now. So on behalf of Mike and myself, Andy, <laughs> swing yourself. I'd be happy to. I feel like Debo explained most of uh, most of it for me. Every year, you know, Look, being like a man can only get you so far. <laughs> it can get you pretty far, Mike. <laughs> Here's the deal with Debo. Uh, you're right, Jason. It's not a high passing volume offense. It's an offense that's predicated on a great running game, play action passes, screen game. Uh, and, and thank goodness that they have a player like Debo Samuel because there's no more uh, exciting place on the field for Jimmy Garoppolo than 6.5 yards away from the line of scrimmage. And Debo just plain wins at that level. You, sure. you look at his success rate on screens and slants, and he's in the upper echelon, 86 percentile in in his uh, slants, 100 percent in screen game. He was the number one graded runner at the wide receiver position by Pro Football Focus last year. What impressed me about Debo was that you don't have to bake in a some sort of second year leap in involvement to get a breakout. Debo was the wide receiver six in fantasy football from week eight on last year. The wide receiver six. I got him at 14. I'm insulting him with my ranking. The you are. The reality <laughs> How is, dare is you? Emmanuel Sanders, he's not there. And I'm not going to – I think that's kind of neutral. I don't think – someone might want to go narrative street and say, well, now Emmanuel's gone and Debo's the one. Well, I, okay, Debo's got his role to play. He's going to run the football, screen game, slant game. Maybe he matures. You know, he, he was – Good success rate on post routes. Maybe he he earns some more targets. But he's a yak master. That's his game. I mean, he gets the ball in his hands, and he finds a way to score. And at the end of the day, look, Debo, year two, heavy part of this offense, I just think you're going to see more of the same. And, it, you know, it's not that wide receiver six level, but he had 10 drops last year. You guys can remember this. He had one on Monday Night Football, about a 30-yard mm -hmm. touchdown pass. No one was around him in the end zone. And I remember coming on this show the next week and saying, if he catches that pass, the perception of Debo Samuel over the back half of the year is completely different than if he doesn't. And sometimes for you know heading into a new year, you've got to you've got to be willing to take the chance on a, a less proven player. And so Debo's somebody I would draft over Juju, even though we've seen that humongous breakout season from Juju before and we haven't from Debo. Fix a few drops increase those target numbers a little bit even if you don't i think wide receiver 14 is a pretty comfy spot unless he gets hurt so i'm feeling good with him there i don't hate it i have him at 22 yeah you don't hate it mike no you know what i like you know man he's a man yeah, I mean, if Jason moves him up five or six spots, I'd be willing to hit that drop. But oh, here's oh, Jay. Here's the thing. Uh, Just so you know, get, everybody, uh, everybody uh, on my rankings, also man. So <laughs> currently, <laughs> NFL requires. Uh, yeah, but not like Debo. No, man. look, I, I hope you're. I hope you're right, Andy. And I would. I feel like I would draft him. 
ahead of where I've got him at 29 for the potential, uh, you know, you want to, especially once you're past those first few rounds, you know, we, we tend to swing for the fences, go high upside, the upside is what you described with Debo. And if he does, you know, clearly go into that wide receiver one role and dominate targets, I've only got him at like 108 targets. It's hard to get from there to a, a dominant fantasy finish. Yeah, I don't I don't think he's going to get the kind of target volume you'd see from a prototypical wide receiver one by any stretch of the imagination. The way he has to put it together, I mean, last year, what, 81 targets, 57 catches, still over 800 yards on those 50 seven catches, but he's going to have to do it in the Percy Harvin type of uh, role. Yeah, Not, that's a good comp. You know, that that's kind of who he is. But he's one of the players, you know, him and Calvin Ridley. I know we all like Calvin Ridley. Those are mm -hmm. players that I'm really excited to watch on the field in 2020. Oh, hey. <laughs> I was just doing some heavy research. It's the research that makes the fantasy footballers great. Click that subscribe button and find out more.